All right, this is going to be part two of FAQ and wireless site survey, frequently asked questions. So this next question is, how do you conduct a wireless site survey? So I'm going to give this example of a wireless site survey in an office building. If you're doing a wireless site survey in a warehouse, it's completely different. Um, I'll get into that later on. But So how do you conduct a wireless site survey in an office? A couple of tools you're going to need is you're going to need a battery pack. You're going to need an AP on a stick style of device that holds the access point and it gets powered by a, a portable battery with a PoE access point. Okay. As well, so this is the example of AP on a stick. You've got a dolly. I would recommend, I would strongly recommend you have your own dolly or if you ask a customer, do you have a dolly? Because you don't want to be lugging around. Uh, and this is a perfect setup. You don't want to be lugging around your laptop in one hand uh, and taking notes. You want to have your, your paper, your piece of paper here, your laptop here. Your, let's say you've got a portable power pack for your battery because depending on how long your site survey is going to be, your main initial battery might die because you're using a, a separate adapter for your site survey and it might go longer. Your, your battery might only last four hours. So the AP on a stick, and if you look up over here, and this is from the CWNP website. If you look over here, there's an AP, and it's an AP on a stick, and it's, a, it's an extension. I think this might be a homemade kit, but we have, we have a professional kit that we use, but it, it's similar to the concept. You have an access point here, and you can see the CAT6 cable that extends to a battery pack, and it powers it on. And then you're going to need to, like, if you look at this picture here, they're roaming around the office with the AP on a stick or on a dolly. Okay, you can see some of these pictures here. These are all kind of homemade things. Uh, they're not too expensive. It's, it's about $1,200 just for the, the stand, not including the AP and everything else. So the next thing, once you've got your AP on the stick, you're running your air magnet survey license. And one thing you want to do is you want to ask, the, the consultant, the person doing the site survey, is it a recent version? Because you want to make sure that the antenna, the antenna patterns are here. So you get your floor plan, you get your map here, you upload it into site survey, and you have your access point on a stick. And there's two ways of doing this. You can do a multi-floor site survey, you can do an active site survey, and you can do a passive. When I do site surveys, I do, I do three things. I give an active, site survey, which I associate my laptop to that AP on a stick because I want to see signal to noise ratios. And I'm going to show you this later. Then I do a passive site survey, which is over here. The passive site survey is going to give you an overall glimpse of what could possibly cause interference in your warehouse, because you want to make sure that there's no, there's no interference. You know, what's around if things change, you can see that from a, a, priv, a, a previous passive site survey. If something new has come, let's say you've done the site survey, uh, it looked great, you did your post installation, and things are working fine, then six months later they call you and say, the, the wireless is horrible, something's changed, what's going on? You come in, you do your assessment, your troubleshooting, you do another passive site survey to see if anything has changed, and then you trace back to the original. So it's important to keep files of, of everything. Okay, so. Then after that, so you've, you've done your active, you've done your passive, then you've done, then you do an analysis, complete analysis of walkthrough of what's, what's around you. Are you using existing APs? Is there anything wireless, not just 802.11, but is there anything wireless within your building? Okay. Then you want to ask those other questions like about the network. You have an IT manager, you have an IT person that takes care of VLANs, et cetera. Are you open to use five gigahertz? That's an important question because if the customer is like, no, we only have 2.4 devices, which is very rare, that might give you an issue. So the third thing that you want to do is ask is, well, you should include it. Um, you need an RF spectrum analysis because you need to know how clean the air is outside of 2.4 and 5 that will give you potential sources and causes of interference. So you should always include that in your site surveys, three or four things. Okay, those four things are, are probably very important. The third thing, the last thing was important, which is a spectrum analysis, because you want to see everything that could potentially cause your network to halt or give you, you know, whether it's microwaves. I, I've seen people at lunchtime take, sorry, they take lunches at a different time from two to three to four. They're, they're microwaving tea. 
uh, they're microwaving a whole bunch of things and it's just causing nothing but drops so imagine you had a bunch of zoom users and you're beside the cafeteria or the lunch room and, p and the microwave is constantly being used and you're on zoom calls and you constantly get disconnected yes so you got your spectrum analysis you turn it on turn on the microwave see if there's anything that's causing it okay turn it on multiple times you could see it in your spectrum analysis when when it's getting congested in, in the waterfall you'll see that okay so now let's get so this video doesn't get too long what do you do to do the ap on the stick to perform your analysis okay you got your software ready you loaded your map we're going to do an active association so i'm just going to go to uh this ssid okay and i'm going to start it it's an active one and i'm going to start it okay we got to wait for data to come up before i actually place it so this is real time so as i'm walking from floor from area to area so i, I start my ap here my access point here because this is how I look at a map and I say, okay, I think that my first AP should be in this area, so I'm going to start here. And then I think my second AP should be in this area. So I'm going to start, this is my map. I started here and I started here. That's how I start my site surveys. And if it's wrong, I'm going to scrap it and I'm going to reposition it here. So let's go here. Uh, we started it, we put the AP here. I click, left click here, perfect. Now what you want to do is you just walk with your AP on a stick and you measure every area where people are okay if there's something that is dense here like a wall you put the wall here by putting um, some density objects in the middle okay because maybe this this map is wrong so you want to put a wall that reflects it drywall will give a factor of x but you're doing this live you're not doing a predictive survey so this is, this is an active live survey so as you walk you're looking at your signal the noise but most important is the signal to noise ratio depending on what they want to use it you might want to have signal to noise ratio always above 28 if they're using voice you know it's not hard set that it's 28 some people like it higher some people like it lower i wouldn't go below 25 but as you walk through you're looking at your levels and you're also at least when you click on here you could backtrack your data to see when you stop it and display it you can see uh, the the overall vision of okay your signal was 50 and the signal to noise ratio at this area was 25 so I'm fine now let's say you place your AP here but you're getting you come over here and it it's not quite ready it's not quite not quite adequate for you then you scrap this piece of, pa piece of paper you go to another fresh blank piece of paper you restart your site survey okay and then your first starting point maybe you're going to say okay well this area wasn't that great because we only got to this area and we had low signal maybe you want to reposition right in here and then it's going to cover all of these areas but then again it's not going to roam to the next ap so you're probably going to have to have three access points one here so you have an omnidirectional antenna that has a 15 percent overlap in this area okay so that's how I would start looking at at it so but you could have one here and one here that's fine because maybe you want to have redundant APs but this wouldn't act as a redundant AP because if the first one went down you know that this one is not covering here so you might want to have one here and one here at least if this AP goes down this air this AP can cover all of this area Right, but your controller is going to set your, your channels and the power and the adjustments for everything. So there's no right or wrong way of designing a wireless site survey or an office. Well, let, let me rewind. If you are overpopulate, it's bad. But you know, most people who have been doing site surveys, there's multiple ways of doing it, and very rare that there's a wrong way. Especially if you've been trained and been doing this. Like if you put 15 8 like I, I, I did consulting for a company a very one of the largest telecommunications companies in Canada and honestly they put in eight access points in this area when I got away with two with a redundant eight they put eight okay that was a salesperson making the sale so anyways let's continue so this that's how you do a site survey and then you want to make sure that this this AP let's say you place it here you put an AP it was stationed here 
And then you want to just calculate and make sure that it roams. So let's say you draw a circle around this area, okay? You draw you draw a circle that okay. So you drew a circle that your your AP when you took your AP on a stick, the AP was positioned here and then you walked with your laptop physically and you got about 25 SNR here. So your your threshold so you want to make sure that the next AP that you put here is going to roam, overlap, at least a 15% overlap. So you're going to position your next AP here, and then you're going to walk to this area and just make sure that you have a seamless roam because you don't want to have a disconnect and then reconnect. You don't want your laptop to your phones to the Windows driver to quit and search and maybe disconnect and reconnect to another AP. You don't want that. You want a seamless roam, okay? So you want to make sure that you have a 10, 15, 20, whatever you, you des or however you're used to designing, you want that 15 to 20% overlap, okay? So you put your AP here, you came over here and you said, okay, did I get 20, 25 where it's going to roam? Because you want to force it to roam. If you're in one area and you've got 50 APs, your laptop's going to be fighting and it's going to disconnect, reconnect, disconnect, reconnect. I've seen this with RF guns. I've seen them with laptops. A lot of times it's, it's the driver, okay? The firmware driver as well as the design. Like you need a correctly designed office or warehouse management system or warehouse infrastructure on the wireless side. Because if you're gonna fast roam, you're gonna have nothing but problems. Your ERP system, your WMS system is just gonna fight, it's gonna disconnect, users are gonna be mad and it's not gonna be pretty. So anyways, that's how you conduct a wireless site survey. I'll do one later for a warehouse. I'll, I'll, I'll show just kind of shooting things over from the top of my head, you know, how I do wireless site surveys, things to look out for, etc. So that's how you conduct a wireless site survey for an office. If you have any questions, comment below and we'll get into the next one, which is why do I need a wireless site survey?